Mickle is the powerful new query technology available in Couchbase 4. In this lesson, we're going to give you a quick taste of how you could implement Nickel through the Java SDK. So what is Nickel? If you haven't seen anything about it yet, here's a quick intro. You could think of it as structured query language for JSON for your multidimensional flexible data documents. It allows you to execute queries as simple as select star from tutorial where first name is Ian and get back a responsive document or set of documents. All the language elements that you expect from SQL are available to you. In addition to this, though, there are other statements that are specific to the powerful nature of JSON as a data storage and interchange format. Statements like nest and unnest to surface or wrap portions of documents within others, as well as the ability to execute expressions like return documents where any child within a particular parent within a document satisfies a condition that you specify. There's a lot more than this as well. But Nickel allows you to dramatically simplify and centralize the code that you write, as well as support ad hoc queries. You can learn more about Nickel in our Nickel for SQL People course here online. So what are the general approaches to building a Nickel query? It's all centered around an abstract class called Abstract Query that's implemented in a few different ways. First, there's the simple query class. It has a factory method that allows you to pass either a string or what in the SDK is known as a statement object, along with a set of query parameters. Now let's understand what that means. In this approach, there are no named or positional values injected into the statement. Rather, these query parameters configure the behavior of this particular query on the server. We'll see what this means as we go along. If you do want to inject values into a query, then you would use a parameterized query. It has a factory method that also takes a string or a statement, but it also takes a usually a JSON array of values that are then injected either by name or by position. You have a choice there. But it also accepts query parameters to modify the behavior of this query on the server. Last, there's the prepared query that allows you to pass in a query plan. This is where you've pre-executed a query to determine in advance how the server chooses to plan and optimize it. And then you take the resulting plan and pass it along so that you bypass the need for the query to be analyzed by the server as part of each request. Obviously, this will speed up and optimize things. Again, here you can inject named or positional values as well as configure with the query parameters. So it might look something like this. You just created a find by ID method in the last lab, and so we know that there's this document ID being passed in, in this case, as a string. Well, here, we're taking that ID, and instead of just writing it into a statement, we're putting in a positional variable, dollar sign one, and then creating a JSON array. There's an empty method to construct it. This type is part of our SDK. And then we add a value into it. You could add one or more. And then those values are passed as a second parameter to the parameterized method along with the statement. This gives back a query object, and then that query object is passed to the query method of the bucket, and you get back a query result. We'll look in a moment what you would do with a query result. So let's look a little closer at how the two basic approaches compare. So for a simple string query, you just pass a statement to the simple method that gives you back a query object, and you pass that to the query method of the bucket. For a parameterized query, you could use positional parameters as shown here. You could also use named parameters, as you would see in the documentation. You could create a JSON array to hold all your parameters, and then you pass that array along with a statement to the parameterized method, the factory, to create your query, and then pass that query to the bucket. Now we do need to take a side trip here into the notion of query parameters. There's more to it than what we're going to address here, but there's a core concept that you just don't want to go without. That has to do with consistency. One of the aspects of query behavior that you can configure through this object is the consistency to be enforced for a particular query. Now, you can set the consistency 
to be not bounded. This is the default behavior and does give the fastest results, but it means that your results may not include the most current writes. Nickel does rely on an ongoing indexing process. Now, if you need immediate consistency, you could use the modifier at plus. What this means is that you're requiring the server to provide immediate consistency for one particular statement within a query. Of course, this implies that multiple statements could be included within each query request. And so for that reason, it's also possible to pass as a query parameter request plus, which means I want strong consistency, immediate consistency for the entire request. With this approach, if the request does happen to include a DML statement as one of the statements within the request, then you will immediately read this new write that you've just made. So you always have a choice, immediate or eventual consistency, when working with your nickel indexing. So it might look something like this. Just like we had before, we're creating a parameterized query, but we're also building a query params object and assigning to its consistency property a scan consistency of request plus, so that we do get immediate, strong consistency for all statements in this request. It only happens to have one, but I'm sure you can imagine it could have more. That params object is then passed along with the statement and the values to create the query object that is then passed off to the server. So what happens when your query method returns? What you get back is a query result object. This object has a couple of different ways to access its values. There is an all rows method that returns a list of query row objects. If you prefer to work with iterators, you can use the rows method. There's other approaches as well. But the nutshell of this is that the value method of each query row returns the underlying JSON object for that particular row of the results. You would then manipulate the data as needed within your client. So in the demo and lab here, we're going to have you jump in and do the necessary indexing to support ad hoc queries of a data set that you've loaded. But then you'll also use the SDK to execute a query through the lab application. Your code is going to end up looking something like this. I've got our Couchbase repository open here from the solution code so that we can take a look and contrast what you did in the last lab where we simply got a particular document by ID and compare it with how you would achieve the same result using nickel. Now, of course, arguably nickel is overkill if you're just getting a specific known document by its ID. However, this compare and contrast here allows us to walk through a number of aspects that we've discussed about the query objects and the query method. So here we see a statement similar to what we had on the slide, select customer360.star from our customer360 bucket, use keys. And in the lab, you'll understand why we use this particular syntax, or you may already understand it from the Nickel for SQL People course, but we're doing a key scan rather than a full document scan for speed reasons. Then we create a JSON array, an empty array, and we add to it our parameter ID. And then we are building a query params object and setting its consistency to request plus to ensure that we get immediate consistency in our results. We're then passing all three of these, the statement, the values, and the params, to the parameterized method to get back our query object, which we pass to the bucket. That gives us back a query result, which we're calling result, and then we're using the all rows method to get back a list of query row objects. Here we'll create our JSON document, and if there are no documents in that list, we'll just set the document to null. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and grab the first row out of our list, grab its value, which is a JSON object called content here, and then just as we've been doing in other labs, we pass that JSON object along with the document ID to create the JSON document that we then pass into the rest of the application. Again, building and executing a query just to get one document by a known document ID is overkill. However, please understand this allows us to illustrate a number of things about Nickel that in real life you would likely use in a number of different ways. 
I hope you go ahead and jump into the workbook. And even though I've shown you some of the nutshell code here, please take the time to work through it on your own and work a bit in CBQ, the command line tool to execute some queries yourself. For learning purposes, putting it through your fingertips is a lot different than simply hearing it and seeing it. It's a good part of the learning process. I hope you take time to do it, and I hope you come back for the next lesson.